Joining us for another edition, Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Mandel. We're in our medication room here at our clinic. And I wanted to say a few words today about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a disorder that can be quite serious, even disabling. And people get from experiencing or even witnessing a traumatic event. Not a traumatic event can be something they're participating in, such as a war, something that happens to them, such as an automobile accident, something that's done to them, such as a rape. A great many people have PTSD. It's estimated that it, the prevalence is about 3% of the United States population has PTSD at any one time. That means uh, over a lifetime, somewhere between 3 and 11% of everyone has post-traumatic stress disorder. It typically manifests within a month of the event, although it can be latent or dormant for months or even years, and then triggered by a seemingly trivial, seemingly innocuous event. Somebody comes home from war and they just seem totally fine, and they hear a, a song, or a series of songs, or a particular artist, and it brings them right back to where they were. They start having the nightmares, the anxiety, the hypervigilance, the flashbacks, and they become almost non-functional. Some of them really do become non-functional. These things can be triggered by what seem like everyday events. People suddenly can't drive on the freeway, or they can drive but not in the left lane because it's too close to the bridge abutment. Then next they can't get on the freeway at all. These traumatic events and their sequelae can be treated. Uh, women who suffer rape frequently develop PTSD. Over half of them develop some level of post-traumatic stress disorder. Fortunately, these victims are very good candidates for treatment. Many, many of them get well and get beyond this horrible, almost crippling disorder. And I don't know for sure why women do so much better than people who are contract this through war events. But many people think there's absolutely nothing that women would like to bring back or save or remember from their assaults, from their being assaulted. Whereas men often have some nostalgia for certain aspects of the war experience. It's full of togetherness. I, I, I know that sounds macabre. But I'm talking from having listened to soldiers and read what soldiers wrote about the, the intimacy and the specialness of the bond that one has in, with one's platoon members. And people sleep in common and eat in common and party in common and fight in common. They develop very strong bonds with one another. When they are traumatized and they are disabled by their trauma, they would love very much to no longer be traumatized, but they don't want to give up the specialness of the bond they had with their buddies and the memories of that closeness and that the special feeling one gets when one is on a team and everyone is really giving his all and really looking after the other guy's back. So that may be problem for some people who want to get over this. But even those who have those nostalgic feelings very strongly don't want to continue to be disabled. They don't want to continue to be subject to addiction, to be subject to insomnia, to be subject to flashbacks, to be subject to nightmares, to not be able to be alone comfortably and to not care for the company of others. 
reentry into the society for people who suffered trauma and war is extremely difficult. And we do very little to help them, unfortunately. I really want to thank Yasi Leventhal for tuning in and for asking a, a good question. And I want to address your question, Yasi, or rather have Dr. Mandel address it. And if you'll just bear with us a couple more minutes, I want to wrap up what we're, what we're covering now since your question is a different uh, topic. Um, I think what you're saying about the camaraderie of soldiers in war is very, very interesting. And as a really uh, new concept to me about the possibility as to why they may not respond as well or as easily to any treatment to address their PTSD as someone who has suffered a rape. And uh, I, I just think that's really fascinating and it makes perfect sense that there be elements of the camaraderie and also I think the glorification of war in our culture and society uh, of this kind of strength and masculinity and all these other aspects of it that people hold on to makes it much, much more challenging to let go of the less desirable uh, or more traumatic aspects of it. There's some fascinating professional literature about uh, the bonds that people develop in war. Sebastian Younger, who you may know from The Perfect Storm, the book about, on which the movie was based, wrote an article in Vanity Fair magazine some time ago relating this in, in very, very graphic and in very, very uh, easy to understand terms. And I, if people are curious about this, uh, I would suggest his article. You know, we, we were hunter-gatherers for tens of thousands of years. We only started planting and staying in one place um, maybe eight to 10,000 years ago. That's a long time for you or me, but for the evolution of a species, it's really quite short. And we all slept together. We all hunted together. We all lived together and protected one another. And when we stop being hunter-gatherers, when we stop being kind of migratory, uh, when we settled and farmed, the nuclear groups became smaller and smaller. The idea that, uh, for example, children sleep alone early in their lives could have a lot to do with non-traumatic or seemingly non-traumatic and non-sexual assault related PTSD which it seems to be on the rise. The isolation and the separation from one's fellows and the feeling that in order to get ahead someone else has to be behind really takes away from the sense of being a member of a group which provides a great deal of comfort and support for all of us. Yeah, and Just it's some thoughts. A painfully ironic in a world where we're more connected than we've ever been in the history of our species with things like social media. I mean, even what we're doing right now, Facebook Live, the fact that we can sit here and broadcast live and anywhere in the world someone can tune in and be with us at this very moment and participate in the conversation is really incredible. And smartphones and the internet in itself, and yet people are more isolated and alone than arguably they've you know, ever been. It, it's, it's very interesting. These devices confer tremendous power, but they don't give any direction. I'm here attempting to get people to consider developing their wellness and passing tips about wellness on to other people. There was someone on this medium just less than two weeks ago mm -hmm. Glorifying the killing of another human being. Yeah. This medium is totally, and all media, to my knowledge, are totally neutral. They take no position. They amplify and empower us all. Let's use it for good. Let's make our contribution a constructive one. Yeah, no, I want to bring us back to uh, Yasi's question, which is something that we have touched on before and happy to revisit it, which is, is ketamine addictive? And I see that um, one of our staff also kindly uh, answered that by typing in. I'm sure Yasi would also love to hear from you, Dr. Mandel. Uh, we do have, just so all of our viewers know, um, at least two other videos that do touch on uh, whether or not ketamine is addictive. And I encourage everyone to go to our playlist of previous videos um, we have a page on our website called Media and also on our Facebook page. All of our previous uh, Facebook Live posts are on there as well. But 
to address Yossi's question um, now, Dr. Mandel, uh, briefly, uh, the question is, is ketamine addictive? Yossi, I can talk about this at great length, but I'm not going to do that at this time. Uh, Yossi, ketamine is not addictive. You want to know if ketamine is addictive. By that, I think you want to know, will ketamine, if it gets into my body, cause my body to crave it or want more of it? Ketamine will not cause your body to crave it or want more of it. You may want to know if ketamine, if you use it therapeutically, in a therapeutic setting, will cause you to go into withdrawal if you stop. It will not. There will be no discomfort when you stop. Addiction is a matter of set, meaning mindset, and setting, the setting in which one partakes of the substance. Ketamine is not addictive. Those who are detractors of it are fond of saying, we don't know if it's addictive, or it might be addictive, or it could be addictive under certain circumstances. Well, of course it could be addictive under certain circumstances. Just as ice cream really is a problem for some people. You wouldn't say ice cream is addictive, I don't think. But some people are addicted to it. Is that the ice cream or the people? Some people really like shiny new cars. And they go into debt and really distort their lives around buying, financing, enjoying fancy new cars. Cars aren't addictive. Some people may become very focused on them. Ketamine is not addictive. Ketamine used therapeutically is therapeutic. Ketamine can be misused, or as the parlance says, abused. That's not because it's addictive. That's because it's a comfort for those who are suffering. It's a comfort for those who desire to get out of their own skin, either because they're looking for an even enhanced experience of life or more probably because they're suffering from a deficit. Thank you very it's much. It's not addictive. Thank you very much, Dr. Mandel. I know we're, I only have another minute or two here, but since we started with PTSD, I'd like to end with PTSD. And you talked a little bit about some of the different causes of it. Um, this very interesting concept, which is new to me, about how uh, particular um, types of PTSD or certain causes might be better managed than others, such as to go back to the war versus a sexual assault uh, analogies um, or examples, I should say. Um, can you tell our viewers how ketamine might help, uh, if ketamine could help, how it might? It's funny. Um, I talked about PTSD and I didn't mention ketamine. Ketamine was discovered to be a mood elevator by people with PTSD or by observing people with PTSD, primarily people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan having anesthetics with ketamine. Remember, ketamine is the most widely used anesthetic in the world. It's used extensively for surgical anesthesia. And these people had successful anesthetics using ketamine. And someone discovered, this was in the late 90s, and it wasn't someone, it was a whole group of someones. Unfortunately, we can't sing their praises. They did a great contribution. They realized that some of their patients not only had a successful anesthetic, but their nightmares were less. Their startle reaction was less. They weren't so frightened anymore. They didn't insist on sitting with their back to the door. They started talking to others. This was the beginning of what has become the use of ketamine for mood disorders. Ketamine is amazing in helping people with PTSD. That's why I brought it up in this, in this context. This clinic treats PTSD. I'm sorry if I omitted that. It's an important part of this conversation. Well, that's what we're here for, to help remind everyone. And uh, we do have a page on our website. If I like doubted to... that this was scripted or not, <laughs> this is a really good example. <laughs> it's not scripted. <laughs> And there is a page on our website uh, dedicated to PTSD in particular, and I would encourage anyone who wants more information uh, to look at our website. There's lots on it, and uh, in particular, a page dedicated just to PTSD. And uh, I really appreciate your time, Dr. Mandel. I hope our viewers do as well. I'm sure they do. And anything else in closing before you get back to finish up today's patients? No. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll join me again next week at 3 p.m. Pacific time. I'm looking forward to talking to you further about ketamine 
and what it might do to enhance your life or the lives of those you love. Thanks, everyone. And thanks again, Yasi. Really appreciate your participation and hope to have more questions next week.